Hello there, you once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion Moment. This is your day because God has something beautiful for you. Because it's the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Whatever has kept you sad, sorrowful, I rebuke it now in Jesus' name. And I speak life upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree it is well with you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah, something beautiful is happening. Yesterday we were on this broadcast and, you know, it's amazing what God is doing. You know, we are looking at John chapter number 5, the gospel of John chapter number 5 from the Bible, of course. And it was the story of an invalid man, the man who was by the pool for 38 years. That man has been there. He tells us that this man is not a child, is not a, a youth, is not even a young adult if he has been there for 38 years. It's amazing what that would have looked like for somebody and nobody wants to be in the situation for for 38 days now to talk about 38 years god has something beautiful for you receive it now in jesus name just receive it he's healing somebody's nostrils i just talking now and somebody something's happened sinuses in the name of jesus sinuses whatever is wrong i command it to be Restored back to normal in the name of Jesus. That that situation that goes up to your up to your head, and I rebuke it now in Jesus' name. And you're free now. It's happening now. And you're free now in Jesus' mighty name. The pain that goes deep down, deep down as if it's going to the back, but inside, free in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Continuing on from where we stopped yesterday. So the man picked up his bed when Jesus instructed him. He said, pick up your bed. I mean, get up, pick up your bed, and walk. And that was just what happened. The man who's been there for 38 years got up, picked up his bed, and he began to walk. And as he walked, the glory of God was made manifest. But then it was on the Sabbath day, and the religious folks came at him and said, how can you be carrying your bed on the Sabbath day? And then he replied them well. He said, the one who healed me. Hallelujah. Hope you know that Jesus is the one who heals. He said, the one who healed me told me to get up, pick up my bed, and walk. And I did just that. I'm fine. I'm paraphrasing that. So he told me to get up. So he got up. He said, pick up your bed. He picked up his bed and walked. He's not walked for 38 years. Who knows whether it's not even more than that because he's been by the pool, just by the pool for 38 years. So for the first time, he began to walk. I don't know what the story of that, that man was. I don't know whether it was his sin. And who cares now because he's fine. The Lord says, walk, and he's walking. I don't know what your story is. We don't want to go travel to your village and travel to everywhere to be able to solve your problem. The one who is your creator, who is your Lord and Savior, he is here right now and he says to you, pick up your bed and walk. Whatever has been holding you down in any sense, in any form, there's somebody, your situation, your, your, your being lame, your being crippled is finances and will command you now, get up, pick up your bed. Go back to that business again. Go back to that which seemed to have failed. And walk. Begin to walk on it. And something unusual is going to happen. And God is going to prosper you. So the religious guys came and said, You cannot do this. It's a Sabbath day. He said, The man who told me to, who healed me, said to me, Get up, pick up your bed, and walk. And that's just what I did. And look at what happened now. Verse number 11. Hmm. Hallelujah. That's when he. You know, it's just amazing. He answered them, The man who healed me and gave me back my strength, he himself said to me, Pick up your bed and walk. Verse 12, They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Pick up your bed and walk? Now the invalid who had been healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had quietly gone away had passed on unnoticed 
since there was a crowd in the place. Now, I personally begin to believe that this should be a natural daily life where as Christians we come across people and they are never the same again. They don't have to be a special event with posters everywhere, with our faces showing up everywhere for God to move. We don't have to wait that time. We should live a life 24-7 where if we need to pray for the sick, we just speak the word and they're okay. And we don't have to make a lot of noise about that. Jesus went away unnoticed. He was in crowd. So the man didn't even know who healed him. He didn't wait to say, oh, you should know that the God I serve and then introduced himself. He didn't do that. He just healed and went. And that's the end of story. Sometimes we're making too much noise about what God has done. He did that and quietly was lost in the crowd. Verse number 13 says, okay, verse 14 says, Afterwards, when Jesus found him in the temple, he said to him, See, you are well. See, there's an exclamation there. He says, See, you are well. Then he says, Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So he gives us a clue of why the man became an invalid. He said, stop sinning. Can you imagine people in hor hor horrible situations still, you know, think about sin? Hmm. God have mercy on us. He said to him, stop sinning or else something worse will happen. And somebody hearing the sound of my voice now, our God is a gracious God. He loves us. He will heal us. He will care for us. He will cause his blessing to be upon us. But he doesn't want us to continue in sin. Now, grace of the truth. He heals us. We don't have to pay for it. We don't have to do anything to earn it. All right? He does that by grace. But you see, Scripture says in Romans 6 verse 1, should we continue in sin, that grace may abound. So, and that's the message of the day. People have taken up on this hyper grace thing. And they're talking about, oh, God has taken care of your sin yesterday, your sin today, and your sin in the future. So you can as well live the way you want. No, scripture says, she will continue in sin. That grace should abound. In other words, grace is not a reason or a license for us to live sinful life. But Jesus himself said to this man, if you continue in your sin, something worse will happen. In other words, his situation was as a result of his sins. The Bible says, uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin cuts you off the glory of God. So if you want the glory of God to remain in your life, walk away from sin. In fact, run away from sin. Disconnect yourself from anything that is evil. And I'm telling you, the glory of God is going to be made manifest in your life. If you've not made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, there's no way you can live a righteous life by yourself. Ask him to help you. Receive him as your Lord and Savior, and something beautiful will happen to you. Thank you for being part of this broadcast today. I'm Ego Louis Yegweburu. God bless you. Mm -hmm.